Well, good morning, beloved, and a happy Monday. I found this old wooden canteen in the fork of a mesquite tree uh, 37 years ago, and I've kept it all these years. Remind me at the end of this video clip to tell you the story about it. Well, during these days of isolation, one of the difficult things for many people is not being able to work. And, and we are so geared to productivity and usefulness. Our culture, our, our way of life is very utilitarian. We want to be useful. And that has even worked its way over into our faith. Have you often prayed or heard someone pray, Oh Lord, use me today. Use me. And when you think about that, why would God want to use you? <laughs> He sure doesn't need us. And what kind of a uh, what kind of a child would go to his his father and and say, "Daddy, uh, please use me today to mow the yard, or uh, or use me, Mama, use me today to wash the dishes. I I want to be useful around here. I want to be productive, and I want to contribute to our our family." Well, that father would sit that child down and say, Son, first of all, uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to use you to do anything. That's good grief. That's criminal <laughs> for crying out loud. No. And besides that, I, I, I don't need you to mow the yard. Now, if you want to, if you want to mow the yard, let's do it together. Or if you want to wash the dishes, well, let's... Let's do that together. But just know that you don't have to be useful to stay in this family. You see the fault in that? The, the faulty thinking there, here's where that leads to. The last couple of months, we've not been able to be very useful, but we have been at home with our families. And the problem with, with that uh, mentality of usefulness is, what happens when I can't work? What happens when I can't feel like I'm contributing? Boy, beloved, uh, if you're living in Nazi Germany in the late 30s and early 40s, i tell you what they would do. Eliminate you. But thank God that uh, we celebrated VE Day here this last week, and that didn't work out so well for uh, the Nazi uh, Reich the German Reich, the Third Reich. Well, back to the way this looks in our, in our prayers. God wants us to have a relationship with him. You remember in, in John chapter 6 when the people came to Jesus and, and said, what must we do to do the works of God? <laughs> in other words, we want to be useful in God's kingdom. We want to contribute and Jesus said, here's the work of God, that you believe in the one whom he has sent. You see, that's a relationship. God desires for us to have a relationship with him. He wants us to know him. Now, that doesn't mean that we do nothing. That means that we do with him and desire to learn of him. Not to be uh, contributing to something, but simply to grow in our relationship with him. You see, remember the, uh, the parable that Jesus told in Luke 15 about the prodigal son? The older brother had this utilitarian idea. I've been working for you all these years and you've never even rewarded me. You see, that's where it really ends up. We want a recognition. We want to uh, have our flesh, our pride stroked by saying, you see how useful I am? And uh, that's not the biblical. Uh, that's not the biblical picture of the kingdom of heaven. When you check, when you find yourself praying, "Oh Lord, use me today," just stop and say, "Wait a minute. Why would God use me?" No, change your prayer to this: "Lord, I want to know you today in all the activities that I engage in." Amen. Well, let's. Oh. Thank you for reminding me to tell you the story about this canteen. So, down, on, down in Mexico, about 35 miles in the desert from Santa Elena Canyon, uh, Juan, our, 
our guide, church planter. He planted churches all in those little villages. All His little eight-year-old son, Felipe, our mission team from Calvary Baptist Church, me, Brian Harrison, his 14-year-old nephew, Brian, and a 19-year-old college student named Dusty Gallagher. We all got in Juan's little Ford Bronco, and we were gone for eight days visiting all of those churches that Juan had planted, preaching. Every time we'd pull up, he'd honk, and they'd gather. We'd preach, and they'd feed us. We took our bedrolls, our Bibles, and a can of Spam. Uh, uh, that's another story. But we were gone for eight days. All of us got sick. We got healed. We had an amazing time out there in that wilderness, that desert. Well, one of the stops we made out in the middle of nowhere, I looked up and about seven feet high up in a mesquite tree, I saw this old canteen. I said, Juan, look at that. He said, yeah, somebody left it there. I said, why would they leave it? And it looked just like it does now, 37 years ago. I said, why would they? He said it started leaking. It wasn't any use anymore. They threw it away. I said, wow, well, I'm keeping that. Now, beloved, this thing is not useful except to remind me of the wonderful relationships that we had with one another on that for those eight days we were in the wilderness. And the people that came to know Christ during that time and the dependence that we had upon the Lord because all we took was a can of Spam. We didn't have bottled water. Oh my goodness, we got sick, we got healed. It was an amazing time. You see, this thing doesn't hold water, but it holds a lot of wonderful memories that are eternal. And so, let's uh, pray not to be used today by God. Let's pray that we would know him today. Now, amen. And let's pray. And our Father in heaven, God, there is no one like you. Because no one loves us the way that you do. And thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us on the cross. And thank you, God, that uh, you're not interested in what we can contribute you're just interested in us knowing you and loving you and uh, active, but only with you. And so thank you, God, for what you have shown us in your word. That, uh, that, that when we can't do anything else, we can pray and we can trust and we can know you more and more and be involved in what you're doing in the world through prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing right now in this crisis, teaching us that uh, we don't need to contribute all the time, that we can rest in you and with our families, and uh, this has been a wonderful time for that. But We pray for our economy. We pray for those who are sick that they might be healed, for those who have lost jobs and lost loved ones. God, comfort them. And get us through this with a deeper faith and a greater obedience with you. In the name which is above every name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and hallelujah.